Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. The Beast of Bray Road is an alleged werewolf-type being that stalked the cornfields of southeast Wisconsin in the 90s. The inception of The Beast of Bray Road is as follows. Some teenagers from a school in East Elkhorn, Wisconsin, were talking about shared sightings and encounters with the alleged werewolf. The school bus driver mentioned these conversations to her friend, a different school bus driver, who mentioned it to Linda Godfrey. Godfrey is the journalist and subsequent author who was the first to cover the story of the Beast of Bray Road. Surprisingly, many of the sightings had been reported to the county animal control officer. Officer Fredrickson, in fact, had a file on werewolf sightings, and those are the sightings I will focus on because they are the most credible, seeing as law enforcement felt the need to document them. Andreezy, a young manager at a local lounge, reported that in 1989, she distinctly saw a werewolf, elbows facing up, gripping roadkill with long, sharp claws. She stressed that it was not larger than an average man, 5 foot 7, maybe 150 pounds. She said that it was brownish-gray, and its eyes reflected her headlights as it watched her drive by. In 1990, a group of 13-year-old sledders had a menacing encounter with the creature. Near dusk, they saw what they thought was a big dog, until it stood up. The incident was reported by one of the sledders' mothers, named Karen. She said that the kids were terrified, and that they saw a creature with silver-tipped brown fur. It had a face like a coyote but its legs were proportionately too large to be a dog, coyote, or wolf. It watched the kids, and then gave chase, but retreated into a cornfield once the kids had ran half a mile. It, quote, ran like a dog, but with bigger bounds. Then in 1992, a teenager named Tom Brichta reported that he saw the creature twice, while driving to a campground near Bray Road, on Highway 6. He thought he hit a mailbox on a foggy night, Brichter reversed his car, only to have a, quote, long, odd-shaped arm reach at him through his open car window. He said its belly was at the top of the car, so he never saw its face. He saw thick nails and fuzzy feet before he sped off. Tom Brichter reported the incident to Lieutenant Lenz, a police officer with Jefferson County. Lieutenant Lenz notes that 30 minutes after Brichter's encounter, a truck drove into a ditch due to a, quote, something crossing the road at an apparently inopportune time. Dispatch found no trace of Brichter's encounter, or the truck driver's creature, though the incidents took place seven miles and thirty minutes apart. If it were the same creature, it must have been running at about fourteen miles per hour in a straight shot down the road. So they are presumably and plausibly related. Brichter had a second sighting. It was on the same highway two months later in October of 92. He said he saw, quote, shoulders and a head sticking out of six-foot-tall corn. He described the head and legs as dog-like, but very muscular. He said the creature, quote, snickered at him and had the attitude of a person window shopping. And after the Beast of Bray Road became a local household name, a man reported a story that his father told him years ago. That story occurred in 1936 at St. Coletta's Catholic Convent, The convent began as a, quote, school for the feeble-minded. That is Coletta's self-description. But in the 1930s, it was acting as a sanitarium. St. Coletta's is where the patriarch of the Kennedy clan had Rose Kennedy lobotomized and subsequently held after the procedure turned her into an invalid. St. Coletta's night watchman, named Mark Shackleman, said that he encountered a man-sized werewolf digging on a Native American effigy mound on the property. Shackleman said that he was sure it was satanic, and that it didn't go away until he prayed. He also said it could speak in a human-like way, but not English. He believes the creature or entity identified itself as Gadara. So, million-dollar question. Do I think that these witnesses were seeing Bigfoot and misidentifying them as werewolves? No, I do not. As Bigfoot researchers... We put an awful lot of stock and veracity into eyewitness reports. If we claim that a witness can distinguish between a bear and a Bigfoot, then we must believe that a witness can distinguish between a werewolf and anything else. And as far as the reports are concerned, there is no doubt as to what the witnesses claim to see. 
Godfrey's sketch of Andreezy sighting leaves little doubt that mistaken identity is a factor. She also specifically reported, quote, long sharp claws, which does not correlate with what we know of Bigfoot. Even in silhouette, the ears, narrow shoulders, and snout do not make a good case for mistaken identity. The young sledders in 1991 reported a gray creature with the head of a coyote that chased them with large, dog-like bounds. Again, not what we would expect from a primate. Canine heads and large, sharp claws are consistent among these Beast of Bray Road reports, which could be misleading with some apes, but not the type that is typically described or associated with North America's Sasquatch. As Bigfooters, we also put a lot of stock into circumstance, and the circumstance behind these sightings do not reflect zoology, for a number of reasons. First being the presence of the paranormal or spiritualism in these particular cryptid encounters. It indicates to me an overall lack of realism. And Dreezy stated that her first impression was that she was seeing something, quote, supernatural, satanic, and straight out of hell. She claims that when she reported her sighting to County Animal Control Fredrickson, books flew off the shelf as if they were thrown. Officer Fredrickson did indicate that something, quote, unusual occurred when he met with Andreezy, but that is as specific as he chose to be. Do I think that a group of 13-year-old sledders saw a massive leaping canine that chased them all the way home? No. No, I don't. A report was made, but if any one of these kids' parents actually believed this story, they would have gone back to the location, found evidence in the snow, told police that a wolf or cougar or something attacked their kids, and there would have been dogs and police and sharpshooters, and it would have been a big deal, and we would have heard of it by now. Plus, if it chased them for half a mile, as they claimed, don't you think it would have caught them? Or do werewolves do bluff charges, too? Do I believe that teenager Tom Brichta hit an animal with human-like arms that night, the same human-like animal that caused an accident seven miles down the road? I thought it was possible, until I read that two months later, he claimed to see a seven-foot-tall werewolf, quote, snickering at him while walking down the side of the road through six-foot corn. And what of the watchman at the asylum? Did a creature, quote, from hell, speak to him as it rummaged through a Native American burial mound outside a convent where one of the Kennedys got a lobotomy? I don't know. This has all the trappings of a spiritual and personal encounter of the psychological not physical type. Not saying I discount the story entirely, but zoologically speaking, I regard it as more or less irrelevant. Studying the occult is well and good and all. Some very smart and powerful people seem to think that it was worth some time and money, but I'm not sure it's in the same discussion as Bigfoot. A cryptid, or an actual unverified species of animal, should have sightings from different locations over the span of many years, over various cultures, and should be reported by various segments of society, which of course we have with Bigfoot. Whereas the Beast of Bray Road was reported mostly by kids or young adults in about three counties in relatively urban southern Wisconsin over the span of just a few years. Not to mention, a canid or upright canine type thing has absolutely no precedent in biology. Canines do just fine on four legs. There is no advantage for a dog or wolf to be on two legs, while there is a great advantage for primates to be on two legs, if you need a citation for that look in the mirror. And while I'm not an advocate for the dog man, I will not be the poster child for the unimaginative. So I recognize that there has been lots of discussions about portals and intersecting dimensions. I also know that there is sufficient scientific theory to lend conceptual support. A lot of scientists seem to think that different planes of reality are likely, which is a bit unsettling. If the creature is real at all, I think we are looking at something transient. The Beast of Bray Road, or Dogmen, would be visitors, not residents, if it's real at all. And my intention is not to step on anyone's toes or call anyone who's reported Dogman a liar, but I don't think Bigfoot and werewolves are really on the same level. Of course, some primates do have canine-like features. Maybe it is a misidentification of Bigfoot. 
but since the Beast of Bray Road began with school children, it seems unlikely. Do I think that there were people in southern Wisconsin who were seeing a werewolf? No, I don't. Do I think the witnesses in this video were seeing Bigfoot? No, I don't. And I want to believe in Dogman. I know lots of people do. But it just isn't there as far as I can tell. And this particular folk legend, or variation of Dogman, literally began around Halloween. On school buses. Which to me is not credible. Whereas Bigfoot has been the subject of whispers for thousands of years. But I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Do you think there's a correlation between Dogman and Bigfoot? To me, the two seem to be different roads, and my interest is really only down one of them. And though I do not believe that the people mentioned in this video were seeing Bigfoot, some people in Wisconsin were. And some of those actual Bigfoot sightings and reports got lumped into the Beast of Bray Road canine category. In my video, Bray Road Beast, Hominid Sightings, addresses hominid reports that got lumped into the dogma surrounding dogmen. So I encourage you to watch that one as well. And until then, thanks an awful lot for listening.